soft landings is an advanced method of handover and project management in the building industry, which is effectively intended to link performance outcomes like lower carbon, lower energy, lower utility bills, um, to the design efforts that were put into it and the strategies that were intended to achieve, achieve those outcomes. So what we try and do is to stay with the building as the design team, the owners, the occupiers, for as long as we can after the project, um, typically about uh, between one to three years, to make sure that the strategies we put in place are actually delivering what they were there um, to deliver in the first place. <laughs> Camden Pacifice is London's first pacifice. It was designed by Bar Architects and constructed on Runoff Road in 2010. So our clients for the Camden Pacifice were Malcolm and Fiona Terry who commissioned the house for their daughter who's now living there with her partner. Victoria and Matt absolutely love living in the house because it's warm, it's cosy. When they first moved in, if you remember, there was thick snow because it was, it was um, November, December 2010 and we were worried because the house appeared cold and then it transpired they didn't have any heating on at all. So for a whole week of sub-zero temperatures, there was no heating and they still lived in the house. At Bear Architects, we adopt the soft landings process for all of our projects. And this covers our projects from inception through to post-completion. In fact, it goes through to sort of two to three years post-completion. And as part of the Technology Strategy Board monitoring of the house, we're looking specifically at soft landings phases four and five, looking at the aftercare that we provide for the clients and having a look forensically to see how this is helping the clients to settle into their new home and how this is or if it is helping to resolve problems before they come critical. Stage four of soft landings is the initial aftercare period. So this is when the building's been handed over, the occupants have moved in, um, they're just getting settled, they might be unpacking furniture. This is the period where the design team stays put. Normally they would sort of move on, move on to other projects, and their contract would be effectively be closed out. Um, this isn't the case in a soft landings project. They have to be there and they have to be involved. So the delivery team will be preferably on site for about six weeks um, periodically for the first initial occupation period for the occupants. The, the house is finished, we moved in, Justin comes and sees us, you come and see us. We've been almost pestered by the architects to come and check that everything was working well and that everything was working as it should do. Soft landing stage five is effectively the aftercare and the long-term monitoring stage of the project. So this is something that hasn't previously really existed in the building industry, but it's where the design and the delivery team really stay engaged for the next one to three years after handover, the handover of the building. So what we do is we monitor the energy consumption, we monitor certain key systems, um, we might monitor the environmental conditions inside the building, um, and we periodically go back and check and make sure that the building is actually delivering the value that it's supposed to. The Camden Pacifiers has been monitored as part of the Technology Strategy Board's Building Performance Evaluation Programme. This is looking at the performance of buildings in their early occupancy, um, post-completion phases, and looking at how they're performing compared to their design performance. We're working with University College London, UCL, to monitor the performance of the building. We're working with Dr. Ian Ridley from UCL on this monitoring, and he's working with a number of his PhD students and master's students on um, looking at the performance of the house in different aspects, in the fabric performance and also in the in-use performance. We started monitoring the house in July 2011, and the project will run for a further two years. But the early date at which we've collected so far suggest that the house is performing fairly well. Um, we're certainly not getting extremely high levels of space heating consumption or domestic hot water use. And generally speaking, the data we've downloaded so far, the house is performing slightly better than we would expect in terms of space heating demand. Fiona, before the project started, you were worried about having cold bathroom floors and also about not having a radiator in the house. How have you found the internal temperatures? I'm completely converted. Because I mean, I must admit, I was very sceptical about the idea of having ceramic floor with no underfloor heating. But you and I just went down there just now and it's, it's, it feels like there is underfloor heating. I mean, it feels like there's underfloor heating under this floor that, that we're sitting, where we're sitting now, isn't it? And what about not having a radiator in the house? Well, it's absolutely boiling in here. If you put a radiator on, you'd be, you know, you'd be too hot. It's early days. 
I think we'll only really know after the full year, two years of monitoring. But so far, it seems to be suggest that the occupants are um, behaving in a sensible way. They understand how to use the house. Um, and I think certainly talking to the occupants, they f are finding it very, very comfortable. So part of this process of monitoring and evaluating is look at looking at the energy consumption, but also the occupant satisfaction. So you're looking at it not just from a purely technical performance standpoint, but also um, a much kind of softer standpoint is, are user, users happy with the building? Do they feel comfortable? Do they think there's enough light? They're really basic things that actually make a tremendous difference to how productive people feel in buildings. It's here, what we're finding is that the relative humidity of the air, that's a combination of the heat and also the dryness, is, it's just perfect. Exactly, we're, we're and that's why it has that sort of cosy feeling. Yeah. You feel very comfortable here yes. and calm, actually, yes. Yes. Um, which you don't feel in our house. Yeah. Which it's not because the the interior is is does not sort of speak in that way. It's 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 actually the ambience. It's the it's the air quality, isn't yes. it? And and the, yeah. and the heat of that air quality, the perfect heat of that yes. air quality. We'll now log on to the Reynolds Road passive house. So we'll be able to see the live conditions in the house at the moment. So it's the 9th of December. So it's quite cold outside. And here we can see the temperature conditions inside the house. So at the moment it's quite comfortable. The bathroom is 22.5 degrees C. Um, it's good, the relative humidity is low. It's only 42% in the bathroom. So that suggests that the, um, the ventilation system is working well. Um, as part of the TSB, we did a bus methodology um, user satisfaction questionnaire for the Camden Passive House. Um, it came out very well overall, um, it was rated very highly in design, um, health um, and comfort overall. Uh, and in the control section of the, the perceived user control, um, there was, uh, so full control was, was kind of felt by the occupants in terms of heating, um, in terms of lighting, um, and then for summertime temperature and um, summertime ventilation, um, they felt they, they didn't have so much control. Um, and those things are probably linked. One thing that we found really interesting was that the occupant did not use the blinds as we expected at the house. So during the summer months, she was actually leaving the blinds up, whereas they were programmed to be coming down when the sun was out. So she'd overridden the automatic control. So this meant that we expected the temperatures in the house to rise quite a lot and potentially become uncomfortable. Very top floor in the kitchen and the living room, um, for about 10% of the summer, a little bit less, temperatures were quite high. Um, the state had just catched, caught the little um, Indian summer we had at the end of uh, September. Some of the evidence of why this was happening was that the occupants were choosing not to use the blinds in the upstairs section of the house. You can see that in the downstairs of the house, where the blinds were uh, uh, closed, in, in bedroom one and bedroom two, you can see that they getting much uh, more comfortable temperatures and the mean temperature is roughly 23 degrees C, so very comfortable for summer conditions. It turned out that the temperatures did rise slightly in the house, but the occupant had actually decided that she enjoyed the warmer temperatures. You look at the BUS survey, the Builder User Survey for the Camden Passive House, the occupant actually states that the summer temperatures are a little bit too cold rather than too warm, which still shows that um, her manipulation with the blinds was very much intentional and in created a more enjoyable internal environment for her. The health and quality of life is a major factor because our daughter suffers from asthma, so therefore with the fresh air coming through filters, it meant that you had a, a wonderful environment. environment. Exactly. Health is important. The quality of air is outstanding. One only has to look at the filters after six months to realise the rubbish that is being filtered out of the air. The big advantage of an MBHR system is that they have filters which are, can greatly reduce the level of particulates in the air, um, especially in London. It's noticeable when you clean the filters from an MBHR system, you can see just how much soot and nasty particulate diesel smoke there is. So the actual environment inside the house could not be better in terms of temperature, the air one breathes and the low fuel costs. Generally speaking, so far things seem to be going well. 
we've identified a few niggling problems. So I think we're at the stage at the moment where we are ironing out some of the um, uh, and trying to optimize specifically the uh, performance of the boiler. So we were able to identify that some of the central heating pumps and the pump on the solar hot water system um, was on 24 hours a day. So obviously that was increasing the parasitic loads. So we've been able to identify that and then working with the, the engineering team um, resolve that and now we've uh, successfully reduced the parasitic loads of the boiler. So I think it will be an ongoing process. I think for the first heating season we'll be optimizing, identifying problems and then solving them. And then I think in the second year of monitoring that will be when we'll get the, the real in-use performance of the house when it's been um, set up as everyone would wish it to be set up. One of the things you often hear about low energy buildings is that the unregulated emissions and the user behaviour have adversely affected the performance of the building and that's quite often blamed for as a reason or the primary reason for a building underperforming. But what we found with the Camden Passive House is that by using the Passive House methodology the building's actually performing to its design data even with the unexpected user behaviour and uh, well the occupant interaction with the building so when blinds are not used as expected or windows are opened for longer than expected at different times of the year than expected the building still manages to respond very well and perform as expected. Well the house works in a very efficient manner because it requires very little heating even when it's sub-zero out there so it proves the, the, the passive house concept works in reality in the UK in London.